Welcome back. In the last lecture, we have learned about Tisney, the theory of it, the mathematics behind that. Tisney is a dimension reduction technique and we use that to reduce the dimension and visualize a higher dimensional data in usually two dimension or in three dimension. In this lecture, I will use R to perform Tisney on a single cell gene expression data. So let's start doing that. So the data that I will be using is a, from a paper taken uh, Pollen et al. Uh, in 2015. And uh, to perform this uh, TISNI, T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding technique, uh, I require a package uh, that is called RTSNI. Uh, so uh, RTSNI is available, you should install it before you run this code. And I will visualize them, I will draw the plot using ggplot2. So you should have that installed in your machine. I have already installed them, so I do not need to install. What I will do? I will do first uh, load the libraries. So I have loaded uh, both uh, rtsni and ggplot2. Now we will get the data. The data is in CSV format. I have downloaded, uh, cleaned the data in a right format so that we can work on it. Uh, many of the case time, of, uh, many of the time when you will be doing it for your uh, single cell or gene expression data, uh, you may not have a clean data. You have to do some pre-processing to clean the data and arrange in the right format that is required for uh, our Disney to work on it. So let's look into the data. So what I have here is a, uh, the data count data, and I will load it. It is a CSV file, and then we'll see what we have got there. Now remember, RTS need require the data in a particular format. In this format, the data should be a matrix where observations or samples will be in the rows, whereas the variables should be in the column. What do I mean by this? In this particular example that I am dealing today, uh, variables are genes and we have count of each gene. And so the, they should be in the columns, whereas the observations or samples are individual cells. Right. So, they should be in the rows. So, let us read it. Uh, it is a huge uh, file. So, it may take a few minutes depending upon your machine. Uh, so, I am using read.csv function, the standard one that I use to read uh, CSV e file and I am keeping header equal to true and I am storing that data in a variable called data. Okay. Uh, it took some time to read the data and the data is now read. Uh, it has 366 observation that means 366 different cells uh, data I have and 16384 variables that means 16384 uh, genes expression data uh, we have. Uh, so these 366 uh, uh, observations uh, they belong to different cell types. Uh, so I will go and tell what type of cell are those. So uh, you can double click on it and you can visualize this data in a matrix format. It is a large file so it may take uh, some time. So here I have uh, we have different gene names on the column headers and the sample names are or the numbers are in the row numbers. Now these row numbers are some numbers. Now what these people have done when they have submitted uh, uh, provided the data, they have done a nice thing. They have created a, a metadata file where for each of these uh, samples they have provided detailed information. What type of cells these are, where are they coming from, what type of anatomical location they have collected this data. So all these are there in a metadata file. So that is also in a CSV format file. So I will read that and I will look into that. So let us read the metadata. So I am right, there is a file called meta.csv and I am reading that using read.csv. So meta has been read, uh, the data metadata is in meta variable. So again you have 366 observation because we have 366 observation in the data file also. Let me click and open that. You can see the cell uh, numbers which are present in the data file are here and uh, see these are all neuronal cell. What they have done, they have taken uh, samples from uh, brain sections. So the anatomical uh, location of those section are written here is in the first, second column where is anatomical dot source. Then you have uh, uh, different other information like age, area, brain and all these things. And based upon the gene expression signature, they have already uh, has flagged each of this sample, each of this cell in different four different cell types. For example, it is written as RG, neuron and then some cells are interneuron something like that. So what they are, uh, RG stand for radial glial cell, 
neurons are neurons, IPCs are intermediate progenitor cells from which uh, we get uh, other cell type yeah, and interneuron cells. So, these, there are four types of cells in this data. So, all those rows in my data uh, variable are actually one of these four types of cells. So, this is my data. I have uh, 366 observation involving uh, four types of cell and there are around 16,000 something uh, gene expression data and I want to visualize this data in two dimension. So, I have 16,384 genes expression data count data that means the dimension of the data is 16,384 I cannot visualize it. So, I have to reduce the dimension there are many really dimension reduction techniques like PCA and others and we will be using TSNI here. So, as I said to perform TSNI, I will be using R TSNI uh, function and remember TSNI uses a random process right, it is a stochastic method algorithm. So, that means it has to use random number generator. So, it will use the default random number generator in R and it is a good practice whenever you use some algorithm or method where random numbers will be generated and used, you decide and fix the seed value for random number generation so that every time you repeat the same analysis you use the same seed value and you will get reproducible result otherwise if the random number sets are changed the result the final result may change slightly so that's why what i am doing here i am say, uh, setting the seed of random number generator as set dot seed and i am giving a value 10 here you could give uh, some other value now i am ready to run tisni now, TSNI function, uh, R TSNI function in R has lots of arguments and I will strongly advise you to look into the documentation of that in the help file of that to understand each of these parameters or argument for this function. I have listed few of them here, uh, those are the important one because for this particular uh, type of analysis. First one is obviously perplexity. If you look back into our lecture on TSNI, we have explained there how perplexity can affect the final outcome of the TSNI. So, the suggested range is 5 to 50, we will decide a particular value in between. DIM stands for the output dimension, by default its value is 2, that means from higher dimension I want to map the data in 2 dimension and in this particular example I will keep that at default value 2. PCA is another argument, by default it is true. It is usually rec recommended that if you are performing TSNI with a huge dimensional original data, for example, here I have 16,000 something dimension, it is better to perform PCA first, principal component analysis first to reduce the dimension and then use TSNI on that reduced dimension data. So, that is why our TSNI function by default has uh, put PCA as a first step, initial step and uh, I will keep that here in this particular example. If you want, you can make it false. Then uh, one in important thing in uh, using the TSNI algorithm, that TSNI algorithm will be in trouble if there are duplicate data. So, either you yourself check if there is any duplicate or not or otherwise uh, there is a uh, argument in this function called check underscore duplicates and by default it is true you should keep it default value at true. The fifth important argument for TSNI function here is the learning rate defined by eta and it is usually suggested that the learning rate should vary from 10 to 1000 and the default value in case of R TSNI is 200. Learning rate is one parameter which decides the step size when an optimization algorithm works and if you remember our lecture on TSNI, you can understand that it is trying to minimize the difference between two probability distribution. So, in that case it is trying to do a optimization and in this eta the learning rate parameter is deciding the step size for that optimization algorithm. So, if you if require you have to change this value. Then uh, there is a parameter called theta, the default value is 0.5 and it decides the, uh, the ratio between speed and accuracy, it decides the trade off between speed and accuracy. Remember uh, uh, in uh, TSNI you have an exact method to minimize the difference between two probability distribution, but that could be very time consuming. Now, that is why this particular R function has a uh, it has used a, a 
algorithm which is uh, which is doing this optimization by approximation so that makes it faster but if you want that no i don't want the approximation i want the exact isni then you have to set this theta at 0 otherwise you can leave it at uh, this particular value 0 0.5 uh, for this particular uh, approximate uh, algorithm another important parameter or argument for uh, using uh, this function is max iter there is a number of iteration it should do remember it is an optimization technique if you run this algorithm for a short time uh, number of steps you may not have reached the optimum uh, solution and you really do not know when you will reach the optimum solution so you should try to balance between the time taken for of this uh, to solve the problem and the good solution so this uh, number of iteration that you want the maximum number of iteration that you want this algorithm should use is decided by this max iter obviously i cannot keep it one crore or something then it will keep on working for very long time the default value is 1000 you can make a change to 2000 5000 something like that so these are few of the important argument as i said please look into the documentation file and you will see there are many other uh, para arguments which could be very useful so let us go into our data and uh, the artisan function and i will be using so here i am using the artisan function the first argument is the data the matrix that i have with uh, rows for sample and the columns for the genes i am setting perplexity equal to 30 i have set eta equal to 1000 learning rate is equal to 1000 and i am keeping maximum it was a high value 5000 now remember the main function of tisni doing tisni is to visualize the data bring down that higher dimensional data to a lower dimension like two dimension for visualization purpose i am not using tisni for clustering of my data there may be some cluster may appear in my visualization during my uh, when i do use tisni to visualize but we have to remember uh, in the last class also i discussed that this cluster size cluster cluster distance may not be meaningful when i am doing tisni so the whole purpose is visualization so I want to see the heterogeneity in distribution of gene expression in among these 366 samples. That's why I want to visualize in this particular example. I don't want all data to clump in one place. I don't also want them to hold distribute the whole space without giving any pattern. So I want some amount of pattern so that I can make a meaning out of this heterogeneity in gene expression. Right? So that is the purpose and when you are trying to do that you have to play with these different uh, arguments or parameters for this particular algorithm as I have discussed. In this case I have used this particular parameter values perplexity 30, eta 1000, max eta 5000 because the final outcome that visualization that I get the plot I get is something similar to what the original authors in their paper have created so uh, and that also uh, give a good uh, visualization of distribution of heterogeneity depending upon cell type in this particular data set so let us run it it may take some time depending upon your computer so you have to wait uh, patiently okay at last the uh, testing has worked and the output you can see here in the environment tab uh, there is a new variable has come tisni underscore result where i have assigned all the result of the uh, tisni so it's a, a list so let me click it to see what we have we have lots of information here and all these things you can dig into uh, and use for your visualization or analysis purpose the most important thing is this y variable and you can see it has uh, a dimension of 366 into 2 that means it is two dimensional data so i have 366 samples which are mapped into this uh, two dimensions so now i have 366 into two a variable with 266 rows and uh, two uh, columns so this y i will use to visualize because in this y i have all these 366 samples mapped in two dimension that information is there so i want to visualize it uh, so what I will do, you can use any other uh, visualization option in R, uh, but I will use here in this case, I will use ggplot2. So I have already uh, installed and loaded ggplot2. Now this is in list, the data is in list format and in that there is a particular variable uh, y. What I will do, I will convert this uh, into a data frame 
so that my ggplot2 can use that. So what I am doing, I am using a function called as data frame. So it will convert this data into data frame and which data? I want the y variable from the list of uh, tsni underscore result. So I am writing tsni underscore result then the dollar sign and y. This is the argument to the function as dot data dot frame. So it will convert this into a data frame and I assign that data frame into y variable. So let us do that. I have y, you can see y has 366 observation and two variables. If you click, you can see you have 366 samples. Now their values from the 16,000 dimension is now mapped to these two dimensional values, right? V1 and V2. So I will plot this data to visualize. As I said, I will use ggplot2. So I am calling ggplot function here, giving the data frame y, which has 366 samples two dimension, two columns as the data. I am calling the aesthetic. In aesthetic, I am saying x equal to v1, the first column, y equal to v2, the second column. And I have said color it, mean categorize it depending upon cell type. What is cell type? Okay, let me go back and check my original data file. So here in meta, I have loaded the metadata and if you can see I have different information including this cell type right. So what I will do I will create a variable where this cell type information will be stored. So to that I have written here that meta dollar inferred dot cell dot type right. So I am extracting this column data from meta and I am assigning that to cell type. So let me do that. So now I have a list of uh, cell type, right? Rg, neuron, interneuron, something like that for all those 366 samples. So now what I am doing here during plotting, that information is not used during Tisney. Now during plotting, what I want that when you create the plot, color code each sample depending upon the cell type information that I have. So what I am writing, color equal to cell type. And then this is the uh, main thing where I have given the data and aesthetic. If you remember, now I have to give the third important thing, I have to give the geometry. So I am putting plus sign and I am calling geom underscore point function. That means I want a scatter plot. There are some other uh, things also. For example, I have added labels. I am writing x axis should be labeled as Disney 1 and y axis should be labeled as Disney 2 and the legend heading where the color code will be explained is named as cell types and eventually I am using my favorite uh, theme, theme classic. So let us plot it using ggplot2. So here is my plot. As you can see nicely, there is a well, uh, the, a, a nice type of pattern in the data. All this 366 data point is now mapped from the 16,000 dimension to two dimension of Tisney 1 and Tisney 2. And they are now color coded depending upon the cell type information that I have in the metadata file. For example, this RG, the radial glial cells, they are forming some sort of separate clusters. Other types of cell originate from them, whereas the neurons have a broad distribution and interneuron and the uh, IPCs, they are close, they, they, uh, they are, uh, they have some amount of mixing with uh, these neuron types of cell, but still the interneurons are slightly separated. So this is how I could visualize the heterogeneity and the pattern as a whole, as a whole in the 16,000 dimensional data for these four cell types. Now in this case, I have uh, plotted this uh, Tisney data and color coded it depending upon the cell type. Suppose you want to use the same plot, but you want to color code each of these data point based upon the level of expression of a particular type of gene. That can be also easily done. So that is what I do in the next diagram, where the plot overall picture will remain same, but that the color of the dot will get changed depending upon the level of count, expression or count for a particular gene. So what I am doing here, for example, I am taking a uh, neuro, uh, gene called neuro D6, 
uh, it is a transcription factor and I uh, we, we, the expression count for this gene is there in the original data file. So, what I want to do now I want to color code this uh, uh, scatter plot point depending upon the level of expression of this gene in those samples. Let me do that let me run this code uh, code snippet and then I will explain and what are the options I have used in ggplot2. So, here I have the plot the same diagram and I have used a scale the gray is 0 and the red is the highest value 5000 the count and from the legend you can see this is the count for neuro d6 and there are some cell here which are very high count where are the most of the other cells they have very low count. So, in this way you can decide which particular genes expression you want to show you can actually overlay multiple color uh, and color code multiple genes also oh, using ggplot2 using the same uh, same type of code. So, let me explain what I have done in the ggplot2 uh, code here again I am calling the ggplot function giving the Tisney result y as the data it is a data frame in aesthetic when I am calling aesthetic I am saying x is v1 obviously it will remain same y is v2 it remains same exactly the same one now I have changed the color code. So, I am asking color code or categorize the data based upon data dollar neuro d6. So, that means I am saying take the data for neuro d6 column in the data uh, variable and use that information to color code the scatter plot. And then I am calling this uh, geometry geom underscore point as usual because I want a scatter plot labels remains mostly same except the legend of the legend title is getting changed here I am writing color equal to neuro d6 count. So, that is why the legend title has changed to neuro d6 uh, count and interesting thing that I have used a gray uh, in a gradient of uh, gradient of color from gray to red to uh, which represent the scale of expression. So, what I have done uh, here I have added a function called scale underscore color underscore gradient and I have said the lowest value should be gray and the highest value should be red. So, it has considered 0 count as gray and the highest reading in the data set as red and rest of the thing in between are scaled within this color range and then I have used the thin classic. So, that is how I have created this diagram that is how it is sim so simple to perform Tisney if you have nicely cleared your data origin initially and then you have performed the analysis step by step. The crucial thing before I end I will mention once again remember the purpose of using Tisney is to visualize the data and there are lots of arguments starting from perplexity to eta uh, to maximum iteration all these things can affect the final visualization. There is no gold standard to decide upon this type of values uh, values of these arguments. You may have to play around use your common sense you have to understand what how these uh, arguments are affecting your visualization and then you have to choose the proper value for each of these argument and use them. The best point of start is always to keep this thing as the default one and then play around though some critical argument and changing their values systematically to see where you are getting the better visualization. That is all for this video. Thank you for learning me to, with me today.